Hello and welcome to this video for Electric Pages. I'm your host, Robert Mitchell, and today we are here at Electronica 2024 in Munich, and it has been fantastic this week, and honestly, we have seen some great stuff. Now, I am joined by Radek from Kyocera, and we're gonna be looking at some pretty interesting capacitors. So all I can say is thank you ever so much for having us here today. No issue, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Now, before we jump into the wonderful world of capacitors, I've got a quick question for you. For the sake of the audience, could you just introduce yourself who you are, what you do, and what you like to do in your free time. So, my name is Radek, Radek yeah. Cinka. Yeah. Uh, I'm a marketing manager, product marketing manager. Yeah. For certain products, one of yeah. them are supercapacitors. Yeah. So, this is what I've been occupied with for a couple of years already. Yeah. Uh, we re released those in like 2016. Yeah. Uh, but actually, the good point to mention here is that uh, we started the development in the 1997. Mm. So we have quite a big background in oh, wow. designing and patenting yeah. and developing those pro products. So, very nice. So I just want to mention to the audience that I've seen a very, a very, very tiny capacity here of 2.7 volts. So that can't do much, can it at all? I mean, it might have 3,000 farads of capacitance, which is insane. Well, yeah, exactly. If you if you try to lick it, you probably <laughs> won't like what you what you receive as a it explodes. As experience. But uh, although it's two, yeah, exactly. So it's two point seven, but uh, but it's massive though, and so and so this well, is a massive uh, capacity. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember when we were told at school, you know, how the one farad capacitor would look like if uh, you want to build it. Yeah. But, and we were told it's the size of the uh, room. Yeah. Well, but there was a ceramic technology back then, right? Oh, let me let me rephrase. When I say massive, I don't mean in size. I mean in terms of like capacity. It is. A it is huge capacity, but in a tiny space. Yeah. I mean, uh, KBX didn't really develop the technology itself. Uh, mm. It's just it's just on the market for a while. But we definitely are uh, one of the pioneering uh, companies. Mm. As I said, in 1997, uh, we started this, and. Uh, yeah, it gives you a lot of power. So that's yeah. that translates to the applications where you see those. Actually. Yeah. So. And 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 so, my, I suppose my first question about all these capacitors then is, what applications are you seeing them being used in? Because you know, what what on earth needs a three thousand farad capacitor? Good question. Uh, normally, three thousand farad uh, cells are used for bigger installations where you need actually even higher cap value or uh, usually higher voltages. So you just scale them, you just put them in series, series parallel. Yeah, of course. And yeah. just scale it to the level which you like for the application. Mm. Uh, usually it's gonna be devices which need kind of a peak, peak power, or they're gonna need uh, a backup power of some kind, uh, or you have some kind of energy harvesting. Mm. And maybe people will notice that these these uh, applications can be covered by battery, right? Yeah. So why am I speaking about this, right? Well, the, the difference is that uh, compared to the batteries, these devices will give you much uh, higher current capability. Although they give you a longer, uh, sorry, shorter, uh, yeah. shorter so they, uh, so time they give, period. So they give you a much bigger burst and a much more Yeah, it's more like for pulse. Pulse yeah. applications, even for the backup, you know, it's like a longer pulse. Yeah. So the backup is there, uh, but it's short. With yeah. the battery, with uh, in the same size, you can backup the solution much uh, longer. Yeah. But so again, we are getting to the question: Why would you, yeah. in, on Earth, use the super cap instead of battery? Well, uh, it's a it's a lifetime. Yeah. Like uh, you know, batteries they wear off uh, mm. with time, with temperature. Uh, also, you cannot kind of uh, put too much uh, current, through current. exactly because they have yeah, heating they have current limitation. Stuff. And then batteries have a, have a, a habit of exploding. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a certain pattern in uh, in, in that the technology. Industry. Yeah, yeah. But and, and that's the thing, isn't it? So so the so the super uh, the supercapacitor is kind of like it doesn't give you the same energy density in terms of like, you know, giving you giving you power for a long period of time. What it is gonna do, you can charge it rapidly, you can use it very quickly. Yep. And and, and by doing that, you know, for example, I'm thinking of regenerative braking. So as you stop the vehicle, you can quickly dump that power into the capacitor. Absolutely. But you couldn't do that really with a battery. Uh, sometimes you can do it with a battery, but uh, again, we are getting to the, to, the, uh, to the fact that you wear off the battery by, by stressing you... it, you know? Yes. And Actually, we see a lot of installations where there's a, 
combination of battery plus the super cap in parallel, yeah. or, or the super cap bank like yeah. this, for example. The principle is you get the stable current output from the battery, from the yeah. source, which is like for a stable long term. Uh, but when you need a burst of power, you get it from the super cap. That, that's interesting, because that, that yeah. kind of reminds me of how, grid, how, uh, how the grid works anyway. So, like I say, you could be you're driving along, you're, you're using a nominal amount of power that comes from the battery, which is fine. Yep. But then suddenly, if you wanted to, I don't know, suddenly accelerate, then the, then the charge you've generated on the capacitor through regenerative braking gets dumped into the motor, completely avoids the battery, you shoot off. Exactly. But you've never touched the battery. Exactly. So you basically, again, battery could do it probably, the car battery could do it uh, itself, but, but you wear it off. You heard the battery. And, 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 yeah. and, and anyone with an EV knows how expensive it is to replace the battery when it's supposed to I go. I heard it, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm not that lucky expensive. person yet. No, but. no. <laughs> and, that, and that's one of my biggest fears of ever owning an EV <laughs> is the cost of replacing it. So yeah, yeah. these things will help to expense, uh, extend that life, which is also good for the planet because you're not mining all the resources to get new batteries. You're not having to uh, uh, recycle them down. Absolutely. Because their lifetime is extended. Absolutely, but, yeah. But earlier on, we looked at something rather interesting, and I think you wanted to pick up on it, and it was the uh, the use of the capacitor holders. Yeah, I actually, by chance, I have one, in, has my one in your pocket. pocket. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I have many things there. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I got it recently, so it's, it's new for me, but uh, definitely one of the downsides, I would say, of the super caps is you cannot really run them through the reflow. Uh, really? they, well, uh, they have a limitation in terms of temperature, uh, and uh, you, you would you would kind of burn them basically. Oh wow! I yeah, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, the thing is, uh, what to do mm. <laughs> if you have such a component? So, it is it is good for application, but how do you install it if you have this kind of a obstacle, mm. right? So, well, uh, there are a couple of ways. You can uh, you can do hand soldering, yep. which is well, not fun. Is hand <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah. Uh, so one of the ways how to avoid or how to help the situation is to use the capacitor holder or yep. any other type of the uh, connector. Uh, so recently we developed these, which very well fit with our range of cap uh, capacitors, not only super caps but also uh, aluminium. So this is one of the mm, ways how to address the issue. And what's nice about this as well is that the, these are compatible with pick and place. And I'm guessing there's that, yep. you've got this small little circle right there, that flat piece of plastic. I'm guessing that's what would be sucked onto if you are going to place it on. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, compatible yeah, yeah. with that process. And, and by doing that, the entire process for manufacturing this is almost, all, it's almost automated right up to the point where someone's got to push that in. But I'm guessing you could probably automate that too. I, I, I believe so, and uh, that's the difference between hand soldering and the, uh, this, this method. Obviously, this is slightly more costly, but then you have zero failure, right? Mm. So. Now, of course, this, this solution is great for when you've got small supercapacitors. Mm -hmm. Actually, before I go into that question, I'll actually ask you this. So, we know that these kind of sized capacitors are used in vehicles and uh, sort of like large energy systems that need to save the life of a battery. Where would I expect to see something like this, though? You could, well, here in the show we present a lot of uh, applications from the automotive market, yeah. which we see is a massively growing area for super caps. There are just too many applications which you get in the car to, to help the battery to survive, to, to live longer. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, however, a part of automotive, there are some commercial markets where these are used massively as well. Typical would be smart metering, yeah. uh, where, by the way, you can use our antennas, you can use, use maybe even the cup holders. Uh, so in many of our products, we see kind of a synergy working with, with each other. So uh, I work with my marketing colleagues uh, a lot on the on the campaigns. Because I'm also guessing these could be useful for motor controllers, whereby you, when, when something turns on like a servo and, and you have a like massive energy draw from the battery, which then tends to cause brownouts from, you know, because, because the huge cone draw is the same. You have this to sort of provide that boost to, yeah. make, to make sure that the, then the system then continues to be stable. Sounds about right. Uh, you yeah. know, the principle is, is uh, absolutely this, as you described. Uh, we can see that in the smart metering again. Mm. For example, uh, some of the companies are installing the feature of, you know, closing the valve yeah. if the customer doesn't pay, yeah. so they can remotely uh, yeah. switch off. Uh, well, uh, but yeah, the principle is the same, right? Yeah. You need some uh, high peak of uh, energy in yeah. a short time. 
the battery sometimes is not even doable for the battery, yeah. and sometimes you just want the battery to live longer. Yeah. Uh, so it just helps sort of offset the use of the battery again. It's same, the yeah. same thing as the automotive. These can still help to save tiny little lithium batteries to make sure that they also last as long. Absolutely. Now, these little these little, uh, little connectors here are great for holding the capacitor, but I'm guessing you don't do that for something of this size. Yeah, yeah. So well, what's going on here? <laughs> well, for these bigger babies, we have uh, we have kind of a, a holes where we, we can you can like mount, mount them in the in the installation to, to fix them. Uh, they also have a let's say higher mass, so they they, they need to be somehow kept in place. Yes. Uh, so it's a different technology, but uh, you can still you can still use the same kind of features, st same kind of uh, advantages, because it's just the serial it's just parallel a, module. It's just a scaled up version of scaled one of up version exactly. And by doing that, again, you can pop some on the vehicle. The module means it's easier to install, maintain, yeah. and replace. It's very it's very easy. It's basically like a black box. You have two terminals. Yeah. So, okay. Sometimes fine. You have some diagnostics, yeah. uh, which comes handy in certain situations. But really, it's the it's yeah, the, yeah. It's about yeah. The power goes from those two. Yeah, yeah and that's what's important. Yeah. Fantastic. So just before we wrap up this video, for those who are interested uh, in, in in supercapacitor solutions, uh, for the audience who are watching, what would you recommend that they do? If you are interested, well, firstly, I, I always say you have to understand if you need a supercapacitor or not. Yeah. As we spoke, spoke about the batteries at the beginning, yeah. uh, you should identify if for your application it's worth it yeah. financially and technically to uh, think about supercap. Yeah. And the way to do it, very easy, simple way, just look at your application, look at your warranty period for, for, the, for the product, and uh, if your, you know, performance of, of your current power supply, which can be battery, but it can be also the, the mains, the, the, the yeah. electrical plug, because there's a circuit breaker, you know, there are limitations, battery, circuit breaker, but the same thing is, uh, there might be a limitation. So if this limitation gives you issues in terms of warranty for the product, or in terms of the reliability of the, of the functionality over the, over the warranty lifetime, uh, then, it's, it's a time to think about SuperCap. And again, you, do, you don't have to replace totally. Uh, you can just combine and get the trade-off, get the, get the good you know, advantage from each of the technologies. And uh, you will have a kind of a superior, superior product uh, rather than with a single battery. And if a customer wants to get into this solution, should they contact you directly or should they contact somebody else? <laughs> they, can, they can do that, but usually uh, I get contacts through our salespeople, yeah. people on the field. Uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, we have a quite a big network. Uh, in the US, we're using reps. Uh, when in Europe, we have sales representatives for each area. Uh, and so, so, so let's not spam your uh, LinkedIn uh, inbox then. <laughs> not really, not really. No. If you if you want, or you can come to our web page. You can raise yeah. a raise a question. Yeah, uh, it will surely come to me. So there are different ways, uh, and I'll be glad to help. Fantastic. Well, thank you ever so much for taking well, the time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Likewise, likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.